Hi, okay, so it's Sunday afternoon um, and I'm just going to look at this. Um, it's a picture of bluebells actually, I know it's out of season, um, but I liked it for the fact that there's some trees in there that we're looking at composition, remember? So what I want to just look at today is how to change what you've got in front of you to actually make it work. Now, if I We've got trees on there, so if I take that tree out, that's a better composition. And if you think of the composition rules that we've got, um, this follows um, one of the rules. It's the L, so it goes down there and across there with the shadow. Okay, you could use the S amateur, which is where it follows it through. So you've actually got a dark line there and make it through. Uh, so that it takes the viewer into the picture and it carries on through those trees. Um, but I think what I'm going to do today is I'm going to remove that, that tree uh, in my picture so that it gives me the L amateur. Okay, so that's a better composition than having the tree there. It sort of splits the... you're bouncing from one tree to the other. You're not looking through it. So it's not a very good line. So I'm just going to take that tree out in this uh, instance. Now then, we've not got many uh, or much sky on this picture, so this will be a different one to do. Okay, so what I'm going to start with then is I'm going to start with um, a, a green, which is... Um, before I do that, sorry, just skipping a little minute, before I do that, I just need to map in where I want everything. Now, I'm going to... Again, I'm thinking about composition, so... I don't want much on this side here. Well, we'll just do the tree line there and where that shadow comes in. I like that shadow. So the, the trees in the background, slightly smaller, meaning that they'll, they'll recede back into the background. We'll also do that with some colours. Uh, and then we've got that line of flowers there, which is beautiful uh, shadow casting. Carries on through there. And I'm going to take that tree out. So this shadow here, therefore, then we'll come to the end. And then we could, we could do more than one amateur in here. We could do the shadow uh, over there. And then within that, there is some darker blue. And we could just do the S. All right. It all adds to leading in um, into that picture. OK, let's put that little tree in there. So I'm just mapping in where I want everything to be. I'm going to miss that uh, that tree out that goes there and I'm going to miss that one there. So I'm going to simplify the background behind that tree. OK, um, and there we go. We've got some nice sky holes up there. Um, got some tree things coming down there. OK, so what we do with the background here is just more of what we've got over there. We can have some smaller trees in. Uh, in, as long as it's in the background and on that plane there rather than um, in the foreground. Right, okay. So that's just mapped in where I want everything, just so I know where I'm going. Um, and then I'm going to put the mid... Well, we usually go darks to the darks, and I think, you know, for this, I think we will. We'll, we'll stick with the darks to the darks. So I'm going to put in... Now these trees are pretty dark, so let me just block in. And I'm using the side of the pastel and I'm just just going to go down there with the with the trunks. We just get those trunks in. Um, that really is the darkest of the dark. So I'm using a dark hue. You could use dark green, dark brown. This is actually a, a dark grey. Grey, blue actually. Um, they won't be as dark so we, we, we'll mute those a little bit because they're in the in the distance, there's not too much of a distance there, but we will just get that the tree there. And I'm just going to put the dark of that bit in. I will put, just to remind me that that's what we're doing, I will put some of this darkness of this, this grass here, which are the shadows. Right, so I'm just going to scrumble across the, the front there and towards the back of of that quite a, quite a bit at the back there but I'm not going to worry too much it's not the darkest of the darks right okay okay 
So that's the darkest of the darks as I want them. Okay, just a little bit more for that shadow there. Right, okay. Um, as per, I'm just going to put some um, rusty colour, which is earth colour as I call it, uh, down in into that grass at the front. That will just help to put that grass into some sort of earth. Okay. Right. We have a new look, by the way. It's a new board, um, supported by uh, magnetic things, so I don't no longer have to stick them onto the board, which is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. <laughs> right. Okay. Let's do some green then. So we're going to do a mid green, okay? And I'm just going to put in some of the colours around for the trees. Uh, if it's a mid colour, then we can certainly uh, use some dark greens and some light greens. But if we start with a mid green, because it's a good basis. Okay, some nice greens on there. Some shadows. Uh, let's see where we are. Right, let's so just put the... The green's in there and we'll work up um, the colours and the tones, give some form. It's quite a bit darker under there, but we'll, we'll darken that later. And then there's some light sunshine down this side here, but there is some mid-tone as well. I want to make it lighter behind there because it'll help to push it back. Right. You can have some of this green in there, just scrumble it over the top. And we'll put some shadows in there. Very basic, I'm just covering this uh, this pastel mat. I'm using Claire Fontaine, Fontaine Cat Pastel Mat with uh, well, these are Terry Ludwig pastels, um, but Senalia, we'll, I'll be using those too, and Unison. There's quite a few, few brands. Okay, so I've got a path in there as well, but I'm just putting that green in. So we've got the mid, the mid, uh, mid greens in there. Okay. Now let's have a look behind. There's a just a slight. I'm going to just go a little bit darker with some of this background here because there's, there's more um, undergrowth and it's a little bit darker. Don't go too mad. And then when we've done this, we'll pick out some of the uh, the highlights. Some nice sky holes through there, so not a lot of dark down there. It's quite a bit here. Like I said, there's darkest around there. There is some dark bits in there, but I want that mainly to shine brighter. So this dark green here. We'll pull out some of these blue bells that's in the front. bits in there not ideal right okay so the idea at this stage is to cover all the pastel mat with a uh, your underpainting okay which we are doing slowly but surely a little bit of brown a little bit of dark green there put the brown in in a minute right okay so we've just got mids, we've got some darks. We'll reiterate these and, and make them stronger in certain areas um, as we go through the picture. Okay. So the map's there, the darks, the darks are there. Um, 
just gonna darken that one a little bit. We've lost it, but that's fine. There is leaves in front. I don't want it just to be one bark uh, all the way up. It's broken by leaves. That's fine. Right, so now we need, we could do at this point, we could do some um, pushing the, the pastel back into the pastel mat. Um, that will help obviously to free the teeth up so we can, we can load a quite a few layers of pastel on the top so here we go let's just knock that back and that back on there and then I'll just scrub this in so this should be the dark quite a dark area at the bottom where um, here the shadows are. And that's the path on the other side. Just push that pastel mat. Right, so that's all your underpainting done. I know I've got an area at the bottom here, um, and I'm probably going to, um, I don't know, I'll, I'll see. I might reduce that a little bit. <sighs> Just going to blow that away. Right. I think what I might, because the sun's actually in the front here, so I might actually just darken this bit at the front. Right, so we'll just, we'll just darken that there. Let's use another. Okay. Right, so that's the underpainting done for this painting. Now this is where it starts to get exciting. Uh, because you start putting highlights in, um, clean your fingers at this point because you've been using really dark colours. Um, we'll get in a, a fairly big mess in a minute if I don't do that. So while I'm waffling on, um, I'm just cleaning my fingers. Right, so let's put in, let's have a go at putting in some of these, um, we'll put the lightest, uh, the lightest areas in I think what we'll do is just just have a look at um, some of the colours on the other side of that bank and don't think that's light enough it's not let's go a little bit lighter a little bit lighter as in yeah that's better so I just want, and it is a, it's a, it's a very bright green. So maybe that's not the right colour green either. Um, and I think this, there we go. That's the green. Right. So just, this is a, um, it's a Senelier and it's 230. It's a, it's a fairly bright green. We can tone this down later if we, if we want to, but the sunshine was shining through the gaps between these trees, these two trees. And away across the picture so that's the uh, the view that attracted me to take this picture this was taken at Hodstock Priory which um, is mm, I want to say Retford way which is in Nottinghamshire and I'm just gonna just very loosely just use the pasta just to pick up the colours of those of the brightness it just helps it also comes in the front of this tree it just helps to uh, so I don't forget where the colours all are right so we've got the brightness there and we've got some beautiful blues And then we've got these nice shadows at the front. Okay, we've also got, like, it was a bridge. Um, I'm actually not going to do the bridge, I don't think. We'll see. I might decide to at the end. But we'll see how this bit goes to start with. Right, okay. 